Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time it is going to be with a true King Yang Zing deck. Now, this is a deck that I really like the idea of. Conceptually, I really like this deck because, very much unlike Metal Foes Yang Zing, this deck does a very, very large amount of plays, and it's not as linear in the way that it makes those plays, and that's something that I really enjoy the uh, the idea of, like I said, conceptually. But this is a very, very basic deck list. This is my basically alpha slash beta deck list of what I put together just to test the deck and test the concept and I felt like it was doing well enough for me to do a video on. Now it's definitely not built in a way to uh, play against meta decks on a consistent basis going second like there's there's that problem but uh, I'm sure that there is a way to fix that for the deck moving forward but there was just concepts I wanted to test and I wanted to familiarize myself with the deck and this is something that I came up with as far as just a basic like combo testing ground. But this deck I really like. I really like how this functions. With all four of the true kings that all have you know abilities that trigger when they're destroyed and they usually benefit worm monsters. In fact, all of them benefit worm monsters when they're destroyed. The fire one adds a non-fire worm from your graveyard to your hand. The wind one adds a non-wind worm from your deck to your hand. The earth one summons a non-earth worm from your graveyard, and the water one summons a non-water worm from your deck. So, rip in peace, Mare Mare. Can't summon you straight from the deck, but it's definitely still a very good card, and uh, and is definitely in this list, as you can see. Uh, I think this card is incredibly strong, but, uh, but whether or not it still is played uh, is yet to be seen. But, this is just a list that I really like, because like people are playing the more pure True King variants, whereas this list just has a bit of a higher ceiling. The Yang Zing variants have a higher ceiling, and people are talking about the Monarchs being the uh, basically the baby True Kings, whereas the Yang Zings are the true nature of basically babies, if we're comparing it to like the Dragon Rulers, so having the baby rulers and the big Dragon Rulers. The Yang Zings are more akin to babies than anything else, because you just summon one, and you're able to pop them off continually with your big true kings and float into more monsters. You can pop it with your field spell, floating there, like it's just, they're really good for the deck and I don't see why more people are not testing this and are not running it. Now as far as Mare Mare goes, I really like Mare Mare and I think this card has a very very strong application. In fact, like there's, I'm sure there are definitely much better plays that take up more space than this, but one of the easiest plays that this card has is a play that uh, takes up three extra deck slots, but not really three extra deck slots because it's, you know, spaces you're, you know, using anyway. But, you summon Mare Mare and you use its effect to make three tokens and this becomes a level 4 worm tuner. And so then you synchro the level 4 tuner Mare Mare with one of its tokens into a Dinglong, surge a card, and then you synchro with the Dinglong and a token that's left over into Star's Charge Warrior. Dinglong summons Chi Win from your deck and Charge Warrior draws a card so you've gained two cards. And then you synchro with the Chi Win and the last Mare Mare token into Formula Synchro and draw another card. Then you synchro this Charge Warrior and the Formula into a Crystal Wing or whatever level 8 you choose. In this build it's Crystal Wing or it's Scarlight. Now that's a very, very big swing in terms of cards. You get a search off Dinglong, you get a draw off Charge Warrior, and a draw off Formula Synchron, and that's all off of one Mare Mare that you put on the board. That's a very big interaction, and that's definitely something I really like about the card. But anyway, this deck, like I said, is a concept, and I would really like some input, um, and I would really like some, you know, things like just input. That's what I basically just said, right? But uh, anyway, like I said, this is just a combo-oriented build that's not meant to really try and play going second. It's meant for me to try and learn the deck. But anyway, that is enough for this little part of the video. I've been rambling on about this enough. Let us just jump straight into the first game and see how this deck performs combo-wise and uh, ceiling-wise, shall we? Alright, so going into the first game, I won Rock, Paper, Scissors, so I get to start. And I open with, you know, a very True king list hand, but I have a lot of Yang Zing cards. So, that means a Jiao Tu play is in order. Now, Jiao Tu is definitely something that doesn't happen very often, but it is something that, when it does occur, it's usually very powerful because of the addition of cards like Deng Long. Now, because the level 6 uh, non-tuner, the Zephyr Niu, the Earth Pendulum, is not being played in this list, uh, it could be played in the future, but because it's not being played in this list, it's very hard for you to actually do very large Jiao Tu plays, so that's why those aren't really the main focus. But it's still a, uh, a nice little uh, a nice little option for the deck when you do not have access to a lot of True King cards. But there, it should be noted that there were a few different options for my first turn play. I could have summoned a second Jiao Tu where I summoned the Bixie, and I could have made a Crystal Wing, but I wanted to keep nine pillars alive. And if I had, you know, had knowledge that I was going to be drawing that wind true king I could have extended my plays a bit further by uh, by you know summoning a earth uh, Yang Zing from my deck and then being able to combo off with that 
or even the wind one. The Bixie was just, you know, the biggest defense other than Jiaosu, um, so that's why it was summoned, but I'm able to do a lot of, uh, a lot of cheeky plays on his turn, you know, negating his Dark Hole with nine pillars and then just going straight into a Herald of the Arc Light that's protected by battle. And then on my next turn, he tries to Dimension Barrier me for Synchros, thinking that I won't just kill him through his A, but I'm able to just kill him with True Kings because they're naturally very large and they're actually just, you know, very big bodies. So being able to put big bodies on the board without relying on the extra deck is definitely a very big uh, asset. But going into the second game, he gets to start and he goes Photon Thrasher into Gadget, into B, equipping the B, letting it fall off when he overlays into Tsukiyomi to get all of his names in circulation, and then opens with Tsukiyomi, ABC Dragon Buster with two sets. So, going second against this, it's a very kind of problematic scenario for me, because this deck is very much in its beta form, and it's not really built to try and go second against any sort of metagame. It's in its purest form that I can think of to try and basically burn the combos of the deck into my being, into my mental capacity to play this deck. That's very much something I do when I play this deck, or any deck for that matter. When I'm learning a deck and when it's something that I'm experimenting with, I build the deck as pure as I can without other cards that water down the experience so that I can have every hand have the potential highest ceiling that it can have, and then I can just go from there and learn the deck's strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that. But so. I get hit with a strike and a dimensional barrier, so uh, that's that's that. That's what happens there, and ultimately my hand just wasn't good enough to play going second against this deck, and he's able to emerald back his Tsukiyomi that I kill off of the fire uh, True King, and then he's able to just make ABC Dragon Buster again for the second time, banish cards and all that. Now going into this turn, I didn't expect to be going any further than just normal summoning and crashing. Um, but he actually tagged out his things, and I'm like, wait, I can normal summon my BN. I can crash into the Emerald, I can kill a monster with Swanee, and then from there I can actually start doing things main phase too, and actually clear his board. So I make Ding Long after crashing, I bring back the Chi Win and bring out another Swanee out of my deck, make a Ding Long, get Path to get more cards, draw into a Field Spell, which is really good, and then I end up making Yazi and summoning the Pulau out of my deck off of the Ding Long second effect. Use Yazi to target itself, target Emerald, destroy them, summon Mare Mare from my deck, which is a very strong card, and then use Mare Mare to generate tokens. Then go into a Boxia. Now Boxia unfortunately only has two attributes under it because the Mare Mare tokens are also waters. Um, so I shuffle back two of his ABC monsters, but then I'm able to make the Boxia destroy the Earth True King and bring back Pulau again. And then the Earth Yang, uh, Earth True King brings back the Mare Mare again as a level 7 non-tuner. And so I get to make a second Boxia and clear all of his cards. And that's actually just really neat and really cool. But unfortunately he had all A, B, and C monsters in his graveyard again after I killed the Tsukiyomi and the Emerald. So he was just able to go into an ABC Dragon Buster. Now on this turn, if I'd drawn any card that could be put on my board, then I could have used Boxia to start doing some things. But unfortunately, I drew a True King, and that's one of the uh, that's one of the weaknesses of this deck is that if you start running really low on cards, then you are going to start getting punished for it, and you're going to be very lacking in your play strings. And that is definitely something that uh, that occurred here. But like I said, if I'd drawn any card to put on the board, I could have you know Boxia. And done things that would have been really good. If it was another Yang Zing card as well, it would have been actually just really good because I would have been able to go into, like, say, another Ding Long, and then I would have been able to go Path and get more combo cards. But going into the next game, I get to start, and I start with a Jiao Tu play. I say these aren't common, but for some reason I just keep doing them during the course of this recording session. And I almost always search Path off of Ding Long. I found in testing because I want more cards, and I'd rather just naturally draw into the nine pillars. Now there are some times where I do search the nine pillars, but I usually just save those for searching when I need an alternative to path. Like if I have path in my hand already, because you can only activate one a turn, if I make a Ding Long play, then I will use Ding Long to search the nine pillars. But normally if I have neither, I always go for path first, because you want more combo cards, because if you have more combo cards, you're usually able to go into True King VFD, the beast, and that card is just insane as you're about to see here. With a Herald of the Arc Light that's protected under uh, under BN from battle, and I have a nine pillars face down, and I have the VFD that I get to use to negate all of his light monster effects, so he can't resolve or attack with anything. It's just incredibly strong, and I literally don't have to negate anything. I literally save my nine pillars and my and my Herald of the Arc Light for anything that I'm going to be forcing through on my turn, because all I need to do is use VFD to make all of his lights negated, and his deck can't function, and then I'm capable of using his monsters as my own summoning requirements for my monsters next turn because I can just change their attribute like you saw there to water and drop my true king over them by destroying his water monster and it's just 
it's just so powerful having that card. That card as a rank 9 is incredibly strong. Uh, but going second again. Now here I get max seed on a Jiao 2. And uh, it's unfortunate, but my opponent didn't open that well, so I guess it's like worthwhile to try and continue. And basically, I've resided myself to in these games, if I ever get max seed, I pretty much have to keep going because I'm trying to learn exactly how I want to play this deck. And basically, I had a way to force through game as long as that set card was not Dimensional Barrier. And I was like, let's not, let's let, let's not let this be Dimensional Barrier. I mean, that would be, that would be the coolest thing. If it was just like a set bluff to like, just, you know, try and make me not deal with his board in some way or shape or function, that would have been great. But unfortunately, he does the smart thing. He lets me make the Denglong and get my search first, and then when I'm about to go for Boxia, he Dimension Barrier me. So that's, that's a really, uh, that's a really cool thing there, but... So all I have is VFD and nine pillars for negation, and he has way too many cards for me to uh, for me to possibly deal with. Now he's not gonna be able to resolve ABC Dragon Buster or attack with anything, and he thinks that he can attack. So he goes and makes Utopia the Lightning to you know, try to attack over a Yang Zing monster, uh, but neither of them can attack. But he still has ABC Dragon Buster and he has Utopia the Lightning, and he's got two more sets because you know he fueled his hand back up off of the Maxi. So there's not really a lot that I have to uh, complain about there, like. I mean, I did this to myself. It's very much something that I had to had to do. I had to play into it. And like I said, if that card was not Dimension Barrier, I would have had game. Hell, if it was Solemn Strike, I think I still had game. But speaking of Solemn Strike, I get Dimensional Barrier on Synchros again this turn, and then I get Solemn Strike. And at this point, I summon my uh, True King back, but I realize that there's no way that I can clear his board and win. And so I just decide to scoop, because there's literally nothing I can do and my board is very mismatched. I can't continue my plays any further. And I'm going to lose the next turn. If not the next turn, the following turn after that, because I'm going to be out of resources. But So, going into the next game, I start with a field spell play, with all three field spells, in fact, because, you know, you can use more than one of them a turn. A lot of people don't seem to understand this, and people are like, why are you playing terraforming, drawing multiples of them is bad, and that's actually just not the truth. Like, you're just capable of doing so much, but... He max sees me, unfortunately, and I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> Trying to combo. <laughs> go for it. Let's go for it. Um, and so I summon Mare Mare and summon tokens, make Formula Synchron, make Deng Long after lo lowering Mare Mare more, make Stars Charge Warrior, draw cards, make Crystal Wing, and I end up accessing three Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing somehow. I had one in my hand naturally. I searched the second one off Deng Long because I wanted more negations against the other cards he was having off Max C. And then I just drew one off of like the Charge Warrior or the Formula, one of those, along the way. It was actually a really insane interaction. So now I've got three Nine Pillars of the Yang Zing face down, and he's making a smart move. He's he's playing as if all these cards are real, in which they are, so very, very much something that I agree with wholeheartedly. And so I decided to negate some very key cards, and I put the Chi Win and I put the BN on the board. And so at this point, for some reason, he just decided not to take into account the fact that my BN is a quick effect. And so at this point, I'm just like, as long as I keep the BN and the Chi Win on the board, he's not going to be able to unload his hand for anything. And so here he goes and makes Bujin Tsukiyomi, and he goes and activates its effect, and it's not a cost to discard, and I'm like, oh my god, I got him! He made a crippling misplay, and I activate my BN's effect, and Synchro into Herald of the Arclight, which is Macro Cosmos, and all of his cards get discarded. And so, in his hand were two copies, the only two copies of C the deck plays, because this is Elvis Vu's Anaheim deck list, was the one I always play against, because it's the one that had the most recent, like, major success. And then, like, he had two C's, he had two B's, two A's, and one A was in the graveyard, or something like that. Like, he has access to no ABC Dragon Buster for the rest of this game, because the two C's that are in the deck list were banished. Um, so, like, that's a very key thing. His deck now no longer has any win condition. And so he was just trying to unload his hand, because if he had unloaded his hand successfully, he was making double ABC Dragon Buster, and he was probably just killing me. Very, very easy. Like, it was a very, it was a very easy interaction. But he forgot the fact that the Yang Zing monsters were quick effects, and that actually bit him in the ass. The quick effect of Synchro was something that he just forgot about completely, and it's a very crippling misplay that ended up just letting me win that game when I literally had no reason doing so. I had zero reason winning that game, and zero... Like, zero reason, zero, like, <laughs> like, there's zero justification. That's the word I was looking for, justification. There was no way possible I was justified winning that game until he made that misplay. Because he was playing, like, every single one of my back row were real, in which they were. So he was playing correctly up until the point where he just got flustered that all of his cards were getting negated. Even though he had drawn, like, 14 cards <laughs> off Max C. And, um, uh, I don't, not 14, but definitely a lot. He was definitely, like, at 24. 
8 to 25 cards left in the deck, and that's that's at least 10 cards that I gave him off of that play, and it was just insane. Like, the fact that that even happened, and that that was the ending to the video was just something that I did not see coming in any way, shape, or form, and I'm really, really surprised that that was something that, uh, that actually happened. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you have any suggestions for the build or anything like that, or if you have any videos you could shoot me, that are, uh, that are of people playing this deck that you think are some decent builds or something like that or decent play strengths, then definitely let me know. Like I said, this is something that I've just basically just started testing. Like, I really like the concept of the deck because it is very non-linear, unlike Metal Foes Yang Zang. Metal Foes Yang Zang is very, very linear in nature. This deck is very flexible. Although it takes a lot more card commitment, it's very flexible and very recoverable and very resilient, and that's something that I really like. But anyway, if you like this video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. Helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow. Check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like. There's a thousand plus uploads over there. So if you can't find another game video you like or another video you like, then I'd be very, very surprised. But other than that, as I already said, thank you for watching. Thanks for your time as usual. And as always, guys, take care.